This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE2301 statics. We've got our 3D rigid body equilibrium problem today. And uh, we'll talk about the setup here in a minute. First, I want to talk about the steps in solving these kind of problems. Step one, of course, is the all important free body diagram. I want to get in step two, everything in Cartesian format, my forces, both known and unknown, and my position vectors, which I'm going to need for the next step, which is to sum moments about a support. Sum moments about a support is uh, one way to do it, probably the easiest way in 3D is to do R cross F cross product of the position vector with the force vector. Remember the position vector is going from the point I'm taking a moment about to the force vector. In my sum of, motion, sum of moments equations I've got to have my reaction moments if there are any and there are in this case. Step four is to gather all of my common terms, my moments about the i in i, j, or k, or in the x, y, z direction, about those axes, and set those equal to zero. And then finally do a sum of forces in the x, y, and z to get the other reactions. Let's look at the setup. I've got x, y, z coordinate system. I've got a bar with a hinge at the origin, O. The bar makes a 50 degree angle below the y-axis, the bar lies in the y-z plane, so it's not in the x, not coming out in the x at all. It's nine feet long. I have a cable at this end attached to point B where the bar is nine feet long and running up to a support at point A, these coordinates, negative two, eight, and three. And then I've got a force, 500 pounds, which I've kind of already expressed in a Cartesian format, negative 500K pounds down, meaning it's attached at point C, which is five feet from the origin along the bar. So I'm going to have to do some geometry and using that 50 degree angle and the length of those two points, nine feet and then five feet, and I can get these coordinates of point C and point B, which I've given here. For instance, B is zero in the X because it's lying in the ZY plane. 5.79, which is just nine times the cosine of 50, this length here, in the Y, and negative 6.89, which is nine sine of 50, down in the Z direction. Do the same thing for C, similarly. Now I'm ready to do a free body diagram, which looks like this. I remove the supports and replace them with forces and reactions. At point O, where I've got a hinge, I've got forces in all three directions, and I assume the positive X, Y, and Z direction for my reactions. And then I've got moments about the Y and the Z axis. The only one I don't have a moment about is the X axis, which is passing through the hinge pin longitudinal axis of the hinge, so of course it freely rotates about that axis, the x-axis. There is no mx, mox as I would have called it, but I've got moy and moz. I use the uh, right hand rule to establish the direction of those. I want to assume the moments in the positive direction for rotation about each axis, the y and the z. Right hand rule, for instance, about the y axis, point my thumb in the positive y axis direction. My fingers curl over the top. That's how I've shown this. It may be hard to visualize in 2D, but same thing with Z. Thumb up, positive x, positive Z. Fingers curl in the direction of positive moment. Then I put my two forces, both the known one, negative 500 K pounds down at point C. My unknown force in the cable, TAB, as I've called it, acting at point B. And then two position vectors, because I'm going to take moments about point O to eliminate some of these forces, all of the uh, uh, straight forces. So I got RBO, 
position vector from the O origin to the point B or CO from the origin to point C. Okay, so I've got a good free body diagram. Now I'm ready to express everything in Cartesians, step two. TAB, I just do a directed force vector, figure out what that is. Negative 2 plus 2.21J, 9.89, just by subtracting the coordinates of B from the coordinates of A. Divide by the square of the sum of the squares. Do all the math, and I get all these components of the force in the cable, TAB. Negative 0.1936, TAB and the I, and so forth. This number times J, and this number times K. Everything is pounds. I'm working in pounds because my given force was in pounds. Now I need my position vectors, RBO, just the coordinates of point A, I mean point B, subtracted from zero, subtract from them zero, so it's really just the coordinates of point B. This Cartesian format C is the same way, RCO, C over O, is the coordinates of point C. Just like that. Once again, I write my force vector with, I like to put placeholders in there for my zeros so I don't mess up my determinants. Looks like that. It's pounds. Now I'm ready for step three, some moments about a support. I want some moments about point O, as I said, to eliminate OX, OY, and OZ. And I've got two forces, one known, one unknown, plus my moment reactions, MOY and MOZ, as I've called them. So the moment caused by the force F is the cross product of the R, CO position vector crossed with F, the force. Put that over here in the determinant right here. I've called that kind of MF, the moment caused by the force F. I've also got to do the cross product of the position vector RB over O with the unknown force in the cable. And I've got to add in my moments reactions about the Y and the Z axis. So the determinant for this R cross F cross product looks like this with unit on the top, position in the middle, force on the bottom. Similarly MAB, the moment caused by the force in cable AB looks like this. Position, I mean unit, position, and force plus MOI and MOZ. I evaluate this determinant looks like this. This should be MF. Not MR. You know what I mean. That's equal to just evaluating this determinant. 3. Point I times 3.21 times negative 500 minus 0. So that works out to be that. Um, the J is all 0 out. The K is all 0 out. So I just get. I recommend writing all these intermediate calculations out because you're going to make mistakes and you need to go back and see where you made a mistake. I get this negative 1605i minus 0 plus 0k. The moment I evaluate this determinant just like this, i gives me these components, 579 times 0.957 minus a minus 6.89 times 0.214 TAB. Note that in this one I have a TAB, the force in the cable component, to all these parts and pieces. Continue evaluating the determinant. I get these expressions. I evaluate them like this with intermediate steps. Combine all the uh, common terms, the I and the J and the K, and I get this expression for MAB, in which I've written in blue. Then I've got to add in my reactions at O, my moments, about the Y and the Z axis. I express those in a Cartesian way, which they are no I or no J, no K or no I and no J for this one, the moment about the Z axis. Now, I've cleverly written them in columns, keeping the columns with the I's over here, columns with J's 
and K is over here. So I can just conveniently look up there and then re rewrite that equation, express it equal to, make it equal to zero. The moments about, the sum of the moments about the x-axis, or the i, or this column, is negative 1605. Note that I've dropped the i, because these are all i's. Plus 7017 TAB. No moment from either one of those about the x-axis. So TAB is just 1605 over 7.017, 228.7 .7 pounds. Now as I proceed on, I'm going to use that and plug that into all these other equations. Here's where you know, I've summed all the moments about the y-axis, sum in this column, that blue number, that blue number, that reaction about the y-axis at O, that moment. Rewrite it like this, plug in what I know about TAB, that it's 228.7, and I get uh, the reaction MO about the y-axis is negative 305 foot-pounds. Now stop for a second and look at what that negative means. I've assumed positive, pointing my thumb in the positive y direction, curling over the top, so the negative sign means it's the other direction. I can point my thumb in the negative y direction, fingers curl in the direction of the moment, of a negative moment, kind of over the top of the y-axis, away from me. Similarly, I can do the last sum of the moments of the z, about the z-axis, by summing all these, this column, 0, 1.121 TAB, MO, about the z-axis, write that all out, plug in the known value for TAB now, I get negative 256 foot-pounds. Similarly, I can see the direction of it by pointing my thumb in the negative z direction, my fingers curl or just the opposite of this positive moment. Finally, I'm on the home stretch. Just do the sum of forces in the X. All I've got is the OX reaction at the hinge minus the, uh, the I component or the X component of TAB, 0.1936 TAB. So OX is equal to 0.1936 times the force in the cable, 44.3 pounds. Do the same thing for the sum of forces in the Y. Just got the OY plus the Y component of TAB. OY is equal to negative 48.9 pounds. Let's think about that for a second. The cable's pulling it, pulling this bar to the right or in the positive Y direction. So I need a reaction in the negative Y direction to counteract it. And so that negative sign makes sense to me as I just apply my common sense analysis of this thing. Finally, uh, last but not least, some forces in the Z direction, OZ, the reaction, plus the Z component of the force in the cable, minus my applied 500 pound force, works out to be OZ is equal to 281 pounds up, positive, the, the way I assumed it which makes sense because I have 500 pounds down on the sort of in the middle of the bar, pretty near the middle. I've got a force up from the cable as one reaction, so I need another upward force at point O, so this positive is confirmed by 